Yesterday I uploaded a 30 minute video going through the proof of this question. Today I'm going to do it in a much more condensed, much more shorter version. This is the too long didn't read version if you like. And the proof of this question is something called proof by infinite descent. Proof by infinite descent. And it's a well known uh, way of proving particular questions. It's a form of proof by contradiction. Now, if you are not familiar with uh, proofs, mathematical proofs, then you're not going to be able to do a question like this. You need to have that understanding of what of doing proofs in mathematics. Uh, but uh, this proof by infinite descent is to do with the fact we're talking about integers. Okay, if we're talking about rational numbers, it's much harder because you can always think of a smaller rational number, right? If you give me a rational number like one over one hundred then I can think of a smaller one. But the fact that we're talking about integers means there is a smallest integer. And uh, the proof relies on that fact. You cannot actually infinitely descend through the integers. You eventually have to hit the lowest one. Okay, so let's get on with this now. It starts off by letting this expression equal some integer n. Okay, and we're going to assume that this n is not a perfect square because it's asking us to show that it is the square of an integer. Actually, before I start that, let's rearrange this equation. Again, I went through this in much more detail in the other video, but we can rearrange this in the form uh, a squared take n b a plus b squared uh, take n equals zero. And then we're going to assume, as I said, assume uh, n is not a perfect square. Perfect square. Okay, and we're going to show there's a contra contradiction there. Okay, first thing to say is that if n is not a perfect square, this part on the end of this quadratic, uh, this is uh, a, an equation in quadratic form in terms of a, a squared, take something a, take a constant. Uh, this part here cannot equal zero. So b squared take n cannot equal zero. And we can also say there'll be two solutions to this quadratic, right? And let's call those a1 and a2. So we'll say let a1 and a2 uh, be uh, solutions to this quadratic uh, such that uh, a1 is less than a2. Okay, and uh, just to give a bit of context or a bit of familiarity, uh, if we think of a quadratic equation such as x squared take 5x plus 6 equals 0, uh, you can factorize that into um, two factors. Okay, so this would factorize to x take 2 and x take 3. And then you say the solutions are x equals 2 and x equals 3. Okay, um, so that's what we're doing here, right? We, we're saying this is some quadratic equation such that it has two solutions, a1 and a2, and one of them is less than the other, just like we would have in a normal uh, quadratic equation. Also, we know from this equation that the smaller solution cannot equal zero because this would have to equal zero. I won't go into this in too much detail, but basically you need this part, this constant on the end to be uh, not there. In, it needs to be zero in order for a to equal zero uh, because then you need to be able to factorize that into a times, uh, what would it be, uh, a take nb equals zero. Then you get a solution for a equal to zero. Uh, but because we do have some constant on the end there, uh, a1 cannot equal zero. Also, we can say, also, if uh, b and n are greater than zero, remember that's a condition of the question, they are positive integers, and if a and b are positive integers, the result must be a positive integer. Okay, let's just make that clear. So if b and n are positive integers greater than zero, a1 cannot be less than zero uh, because as a squared plus b squared over ab plus one uh, is greater than zero. Okay because all of these are positive integers, so this must be greater than zero. In order for the solution to be negative, we'd have to have a negative solution here. Okay, uh, and then, therefore, we can say 
a1 is greater than 0 and less than a2. Therefore, there always uh, must be a smaller positive integer solution for a. Okay, this is the idea of proof by infinite descent, as I talked about. Well, we can eventually get a smallest positive integer. This is a contradiction. We eventually must have a1 being either 0 or less than 0. Um, so we can say this is a contradiction. And uh, therefore, well, the only assumption we made was uh, n is not a perfect square. So we can say then, because we have a contradiction, n must be a perfect square. A perfect square. Okay, that is the too long, didn't read version of this proof. If you want a much longer, uh, more in detail explanation, check out my other 30 minute video going through this question. All right, that is somehow a very difficult question, but also somehow simple or elegant in its solution and all based on this idea of proof by infinite descent. Okay, I hope you found that useful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.